In this lesson, we will focus on molecular solids and their properties. The particles within molecular solids are molecules. The molecules are held together by intermolecular forces, which are also known as van der Waals forces. These forces are weak. So it's important to note that the forces or the bonds within each molecule, so holding the atoms of one molecule together, are covalent bonds. And these covalent bonds are very strong. But the forces holding two molecules together are the weak intermolecular or van der Waals forces. So in a molecule, the electrons move around that molecule. And just by chance, sometimes all of the electrons end up on one side of the molecule. The end with all of the electrons becomes negatively charged, whereas the other end where there's just the protons becomes positively charged. And this creates a temporary dipole. When this happens, when a temporary dipole is created, the electrons of the molecule next to it are attracted to this positive end. So the electrons in the next molecule move to one end, creating what's called an instantaneous dipole in this one. It happens in an instant when the molecule next to it gains a temporary dipole. This then leaves this molecule with a slightly negative and a slightly positive end, which causes the molecule next to it to gain an instantaneous dipole because the electrons in this molecule become attracted to the positive end. And this continues throughout the molecular solid. These temporary dipoles do not last very long before the electrons move again and the dipoles, those temporary dipoles, are broken. However, they then reform somewhere else throughout the solid. So these intermolecular forces are temporary and they're constantly forming and reforming, but they are very weak. In a nonpolar molecule, these van der Waals forces are also sometimes given the name London dispersion forces. In a polar molecule, the intermolecular forces are due to those permanent dipoles. We call this a polar-polar dipole. So the positive end of one molecule is attracted to the slightly positive end of the molecule next to it. And then the positive end of that molecule is attracted to the negative end of another molecule. And this extends throughout the solid. The intermolecular forces or the dipole-dipole forces in a polar molecule are slightly stronger then the London dispersion forces in a nonpolar molecule of the same molecular mass. So if we have two molecules of a similar molecular mass, the forces or the intermolecular forces within the polar molecule will be stronger than in a nonpolar molecule. But as the molar mass increases, the strength of the intermolecular force also increases because there are more electrons and protons creating a greater attraction and in intermolecular force. Molecular solids have a low melting and boiling point. A lot of them are gases at, or liquids at room temperature. And this is because the intermolecular forces are very weak. It doesn't take much energy to break these intermolecular forces, and so they melt and boil at low temperatures. The melting and boiling point increases slightly as the molar mass of the molecule increases. And this is because the number of protons and electrons increases. Therefore, there is a greater attraction between the positively charged end of one molecule and the negatively charged end of another molecule as there are more charges forming that intermolecular force or that attraction. And polar molecules have a slightly higher melting point and boiling point than non-polar molecules with a similar molar mass. And this is because they have that extra electrostatic attraction between the opposite dipoles 
of two neighboring molecules. So this dipole-dipole force is stronger than the London dispersion forces in the nonpolar molecule. So as nonpolar molecules only contain the weaker van der Waals forces, it requires less energy to break those forces in a nonpolar molecule than it does to break the stronger dipole-dipole forces in the polar molecule. So polar molecules dissolve in polar solvents like water. This is because the polar molecules all have dipole-dipole forces. The strength of the attractive forces between the particles in the solute is similar to the strength of the attractive forces between the particles in the solvent. And therefore the particles in the solute are equally attracted to the particles in the solvent as they are to each other. New dipole-dipole forces can form between the solute and the solvent and the molecules in the solvent can surround each molecule in the solute, separating it from the solid and allowing it to move throughout the solvent. Likewise, nonpolar molecules will dissolve in nonpolar solvents as they both have weak intermolecular forces called the van der Waals forces. These particles in the solute have similar attraction to the particles in the solvent as they do to the particles in the solute. This phenomenon of polar substances dissolving in polar substances and nonpolar substances dissolving in nonpolar substances is often referred to as like dissolves like because solutes will dissolve in solvents that have attractive forces similar or like theirs. However, polar solutes do not dissolve in nonpolar solvents. And likewise, nonpolar solutes do not dissolve in polar solvents. This is because the attractive forces between the particles in the polar solute are stronger than the attractive forces in the nonpolar solvent. So as the polar substance is more attracted to itself and the nonpolar substances are more attracted to themselves than they are to each other, the solvent is unable to break the forces holding that solute together and cannot remove the molecules from the substance. Therefore, polar substances do not dissolve nonpolar substances. And a common example of this is nonpolar oil when it is placed in polar water. They form two distinct layers that do not mix. Molecular solids are also usually soft, and this is because only a small physical force is needed to overcome those weak intermolecular forces. They do not conduct electricity, so the molecules hold on to the electrons, so they are not free to move throughout the solid. Molecules have an equal number of protons and electrons, so they are neutral. And as there are no ions or delocalized electrons present in molecular substances, they can't conduct.